Now joining me in the studio is Pastor Othniel Mwabili, uh, the Senior Pastor for City Revival Temple. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. We also have uh, Dr. Catherine Muticia, who's a psychiatrist. You, Daktari, um, in regards to uh, sexual addiction, because um, one might have, you know, uh, there may be parameters that are in place that actually define that this is somebody who is an addict. Because I think one of the things that you'll find with addiction is that one finds they're addicted when they're already very deep into it. You don't actually feel the the the, the bridge between normal and abnormal. So now, when it comes to sexual addiction, uh, how does one, you know, know the parameters? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. We are still seeing a lot of uh, sexual compassion and impassivity in terms of uh, addiction to pornography, masturbation. And we know that uh, sexual hyperactivity itself, mm -hmm. what is commonly referred to as uh, sexual addiction, mm -hmm was finally removed from the DSM-5, which we use to diagnose mental conditions. Mm -hmm. We know that we still see clients suffering from it, and most of the time it might not come out directly. It could be somebody has adapted it as a way of uh, dealing with their the way of dealing with unresolved emotional issues, mm -hmm. and still it's still a, a point of contact. You say it has been removed from the, what do you call it, the DSM-5 mm -hmm. uh, of, of checking whether it is a, 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 a problem. Are you saying that sex, it's hard to quantify that somebody is a sex addict, for example? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely that is what it means uh, that research actually is not able to tell when at what point you say this is too much, even though hyposexuality, which is the opposite of hypersexuality, was also, is actually in the DSM-5, mm -hmm. simply because uh, then if it's, we are talking of a couple, one of them will not be getting um, satisfied, and mm -hmm. so it would be a point of concern. Hypersexuality, people are saying that uh, if then um, somebody is not bothered by his behavior, mm -hmm. Is it a choice or is it an illness or is it a psychological distress? Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, we still find, uh, because somebody might find they are not fitting well in the society, they would still come for therapy, but most of the time it will hide in uh, depression, in anxiety, and somebody feels that they are not able to understand what they are going through, they are not able to deal with their emotions, mm -hmm. and they look for a high mm -hmm. to be able to feel better. And then uh, today it's this high they want to hype it more and more. Okay. Yes. If we simplified addiction mm -hmm. to mean something that all over you, yes. would that be an easier way then of somebody defining for themselves if they're addicted to sex, for example? Because I imagine uh, this is somebody who's probably thinking, I don't want to do this, or they know in their mind they don't want to do this, but they find they keep doing it again and again over their control. Yes, and of course, if it's, you're spending all your time uh, in that particular behavior, mm -hmm. then it means it's going to affect your social life, it's going to affect your occupational life. Mm -hmm. So it's still uh, being researched on, but currently it's not one of the uh, psychiatric disorders, mm -hmm. but we are still uh, seeing uh, people uh, suffering from it, we are still seeing people uh, dealing with masturbation, we are still seeing people dealing with excessive addiction to pornography. Okay. Yes. Uh, Pastor, I'll bring you in at this point because I know you deal with very many people and you deal with uh, all, range, uh, all ranges here, meaning uh, single, others who are married. And generally, would you say that this is a problem or a matter of concern, sexual addiction? Yeah, actually, it is a major problem in our current generation. Uh, and, and mainly it's because um, uh, we live in a day where these are issues of sex. I mean, everything else that is being sold, advertisements, uh, billboards, I mean, the message today revolves around sexual issues. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, um, access to a pornographic material and all that is actually on the rise. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the click of a button on the phones and everything else, people are able to access it. And so it's, it's, it's really becoming a major challenge. Uh, personally, I've dealt with um, quite a number of couples uh, who have come for prayer, uh, some who are married, but maybe their husband is addicted to uh, pornography and all that. And of course, um, for the young people, it's, it's one of the key things, but in schools, in primary schools even, you know, I mean, it's, it's really a major societal issue mm -hmm. in the current um, 
uh, generation that we are in. Okay. Yeah, it's a Dr. Um, talking about now the sexual addiction and pornography and masturbation and all that, maybe before we come to the solutions, how does one uh, psychologically get hooked into that? Because most of us actually do grow up knowing the do's and don'ts, right and wrong, but for those who've crossed over to addiction, it started somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we say addiction to pornography is actually higher than what you get from cocaine addiction. Wow. The reward system is actually higher. And I'm uh, quoting cocaine because it's one of the most addictive uh, drugs we drugs. have. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing it's very common now that we can actually access internet um, through even mobile phones and around the clock. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's a very common issue, especially young people and we are also seeing people who are married and are also struggling with pornography mm -hmm. and masturbation crossover from just general because there are those who may just look at pornography as a source of interest or excitement but mm -hmm. at what point do you cross over mm -hmm. so that we avoid that danger for those who may not at what point do you know that this is becoming a, a problem mm -hmm. yeah initially people will start maybe by experimenting or trying to feel nice and uh, the more they increase the hours and the time they spend on it, the more it reaches a point where they are like losing control. So initially it might start as curiosity, it might be introduction by friends, and uh, today you will try it, tomorrow you keep increasing the number of hours and look for even higher, more satisfying uh, pictures or, or whatever video clip and before you know it, you get addicted to it. So for me, I would say the best would be to avoid because when it comes to treatment, you actually need a lot of intensive treatment, how many hours of psychotherapy. And uh, in each, when somebody is addicted to pornography or masturbation, they reach a point where they can't have an with another human being because uh, the, what you're getting from pornography is instant gratification. Mm -hmm. So it interferes with their future life in terms of socializing and having a normal sexual relationship okay yes. pastor um so there's a saying that show me your friends and i'll tell you who you are and i know one of the ways that uh, kind of uh, lifestyle is through your friends Correct. how does one um, go about ensuring that you're not influenced uh, against what you really want to do to a point addicted really on your own yeah, of course, uh, the, the element is you're worrying about the, the, the peers and um, the people that you, you, you move around with. It's very critical, of course. Our scripture is very uh, clear that um, bad company corrupts good morals, uh, good morals and, uh, and basically affects our culture and our character and everything else. And so um, my take has always been uh, right from the time when children are growing up, you know, it's always good to give them some guidance in what choose to associate with and what they do in their spare time. Um, that's a responsibility that parents also need to take up, you know. Uh, and then, of course, the children themselves, as they grow up, they need to really be careful on who they choose because what you continuously do or what you continuously pursue, eventually you possess it or it possesses you uh, for that particular matter. And um, uh, human beings, we are built for habit mm -hmm. and routine. So some of the moment you start doing something, it's like it rubs on, on you, you know. It's, it's you show me what you do daily, I will tell you what you're becoming permanently. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's really a principle, and, and, and as, as Dr. Ria said, it's really a matter of how we end up thinking, and uh, it becomes a lifestyle mm -hmm. eventually. All right. Yeah. Just a quick reminder to you at home who we have in the studio, our subject, and uh, that the phone lines are open. You can also communicate via Twitter. And uh, we're talking about sexual addiction and how to overcome it. The solution, how do we overcome sexual addiction? And with me in the studio is Othniel, Pastor Othniel Mwabili, who is uh, Senior Pastor of City Revival Temple, and also Dr. Catherine Muticia, who's a psychiatrist. And uh, yeah, that's the subject today. So you can also get in touch via Twitter, and that's at Michael G. Gitonga. Let's go to the solutions, Dr. Tari. Now here you are, you, it's taken over. I mm -hmm. think addiction is a form of, uh, you're, you're a form of a slave, mm -hmm. really, uh, because it has taken control over you. What are the steps, the baby steps of trying to identify, first of all, that you're an addict? Mm -hmm. Yes. Before we go to the steps now of how you overcome, how do you identify that you're an addict? Yeah. Yeah, just like any other addiction, the first main challenge is making the person accept that there's a problem because they will be in denial as much as probably they would have been uh, 
found uh, engaging and spending most of their time on uh, either goal-directed sexual activities or pornography, uh, they would keep denying. Mm -hmm. and, and we know for some people it is so serious that uh, even at workplace they would have to hide control it and you'll find them on their computer and they are watching pornography on the computer until it interferes with everybody. Then you find others will even forget and leave their computers open and other people, your colleagues will realize. So the first issue is dealing with denial and getting the person to accept that there's a problem and then uh, doing what we call motivational uh, uh, therapy mm -hmm. to actually make them get motivated to accept uh, treatment uh, and once then uh, they are started on treatment, then it is a very long process. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we encourage treatment from all aspects, uh, including spiritual uh, care and also psychotherapy. Uh, hardly do we have to use medication unless uh, it's a case where somebody has other unresolved emotional issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, we find they are using this to try and cure the emotional problem. So in that case, that. you find they have two, that's the time we may need to use medication. Mm -hmm. But most of, most of the time is intensive talk therapy. Okay, but I know for, for a fact that uh, you, you can get very little help yourself. Yes. There is a problem. Yes. So like you've mentioned, the first step is for them to accept that. Yes. But sometimes uh, you may be doing this the, the reason why it becomes a difficult uh, addiction to deal with is because mostly it happens behind closed doors. So at what point do I, as an individual, identify that I, I have a problem? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Initially, it would be possible to do it behind closed doors, mm -hmm. but as it becomes uh, an addiction, then uh, you find that this person can actually not maintain that privacy because wherever they are, an addiction becomes more aggressive, mm -hmm. more intense, it means like you lose control. And if, even if you might want to do it behind closed doors, at some point you might be caught still doing it in the open because you feel like there's this intense compassion, there's this push to want to, to do it. So you find that when it is full board, then you might not actually continue doing it full board. So initially it will become, uh, for most people, it will be a concern by the people around you. Mm -hmm or at your workplace, or your social life. If it's a married person, you find that their spouse will start complaining. So initially, it could be other people complaining about it. And this person then could actually realize that now I have a problem because I, I seem to be having issues uh, with other people. And that's the time they might look for treatment. But other treatments will be sought if th this person ends up trying to deal with the initial problem if it was an anxiety with the depression and they'll present to you and that's why as we do a psychiatric evaluation a psychological evaluation we must deal ask about your sexual activity we must ask about such issues because most of the time people will not come out and and, and, and talk about it before you ask about it okay yes. pastor one of the reasons why this becomes a very is the stigma attached to it. And there's also the moral question, of course, that yeah. plays back in, uh, in, in, in the back of our minds, and one cannot talk about it. In terms of support, how does one help somebody who you know may be struggling, uh, and maybe you, know, you, you can't approach them and tell them both, I think uh, you have a problem with your right hand, for example. How, how do you, mm. you know, overcome this? Yeah, um, of course, as Dr. Ria, uh, we, we have to get to a place where we are admitting that actually we have a problem. Right. And um, in essence, when you're dealing with a problem from three dimensions, because we are spirit, soul, and body. You know, and um, without addressing these three entities, it becomes very difficult to actually isolate the problem and uh, conquer it, as it were. And um, my take would be, uh, for instance, um, in the case of an addiction, and maybe I'll, I'll, I'll just put on my old hat. I, I, I happen to have a hat of a career biochemist um, mm -hmm. where I did some practice on some stuff. And um, um, on the body side now, um, when there's, there's a certain neurotransmitter called dopamine, which is really a pleasure sensor thing. And it, it's really connected with issues to do with learning and memory and all that. And, 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 and the more you engage in a certain activity, the more the demand is. Uh, 
uh, for that specific activity that you're dealing with. So without understanding the fact that it's also a mental issue, it, it affects your, physic, your physical body, uh, then you'll not be able to deal with that matter because then you'll always be in a place where you desire it and you, 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 your will, you say, I will not do this, but because your body has kind of gotten into a pattern, it's become a lifestyle issue, you always keep on failing. You know? and, and so sometimes people become suicidal because of it. You know? So if you, first and foremost, you have to identify and understand that this craving, I have created it, mm -hmm. it's now a reality in my life. And I need support from people because I can't do it on my own. You know, so as you admit, yes, there's an error here, I mean, there's a problem here, you also need support, you, you also need people who are going to speak into your life and, and, and deal with the, the issue. With that, with that. Yeah. All right, okay, we'll take a call uh, from Nicholas in Kasarani. Thank you for calling, Nicholas. Uh, your question or comment or contribution to the debate? Uh, good morning, Tim. Good morning to you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to listen to the combination of the past and mm -hmm. Now, three questions. Yeah. Question number one, mm -hmm. uh, we have seen the breakdown of family units and an increase in number of uh, single family units. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the impact of uh, such breakdown of units in terms of the emotional addiction? Number two, mm -hmm. we have also seen an increase in lesbianism and gayism. Uh, what can Dr. Ari say in relation to the issue of addiction? Okay. And then number three, mm -hmm. we're also seeing another advent of things like uh, vibrators, which ladies are using in secrecy. We, uh, I think like... And then for men, we are seeing an increase in the issue of masturbation. Uh -huh. I don't know uh, that kind of a factor thing. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Emmanuel in South Sea. Good morning, Emmanuel. Thank you for calling. Nice Emmanuel. Okay. I have a question about masturbation. I have a question about 10 years. I have a question about the question of the question. Okay. I have a question about the question. Okay. Yeah, but now I have a question. All right. Asante, Emmanuel, kwa kupiga simu. Okay, thank you. All right, um, we have uh, Nicholas uh, Kara uh, in Kasarani, and maybe I'll start with you, Daktari, and uh, he has three questions. The first one is the impact of the breakdown of the family unit, uh, socially speaking, and uh, as a result, we have a lot of emotional uh, issues. So what's the impact now when it comes to addiction, the breakdown of the family unit? Uh, first of all, I would want to clarify that... Uh, People who are addicted to pornography or masturbation or any sexual related activities, including what we call paraphilias, people who would rub onto others or expose themselves or want to look at nude uh, people without their permission, uh, it, it, has, it doesn't just occur to single people from single families. Mm -hmm. And especially with teenagers and adolescents, we are seeing people exploring and from even uh, stable families. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say it's a problem of uh, uh, single families alone mm -hmm. uh, because it starts as curiosity or as peer influence mm -hmm. or uh, as a way of dealing with uh, any some emotional imbalance. And so I would want the society to know that it can affect anybody. Any, anybody. Mm -hmm. And it would be good to discuss, even if you have a stable family, to still discuss it with your children uh, as they grow up because you actually find even uh, children who are from very stable families still addicted to pornography and masturbation. Okay, but is there any impact given that uh, the family unit seems to have degenerated over time? Mm -hmm. The family unit, it's no longer as strong as it was. Mm -hmm. uh, would that have an impact? Yeah, of course, you know, children learn through modeling, mm -hmm. through what they are seeing. Mm -hmm. And so if they grow up with one parent, they might feel that probably there's no need of having um, uh, a man and wife live together and so they might initially not be motivated to go to relationship 
So that could have an impact in a way. But I, what the cases I'm seeing, most of them, we, I can't really tell, the, say they are only from uh, single families. Okay. Yeah. Pastor, he's also mentioned an increase in uh, gay and lesbian relationships. Uh, although I don't really know if it's an increase or it's just that we have more information because even from the Bible, really, uh, we see that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because of some of these things. But do you think this has had an impact in uh, sexual yeah, in a sense, what, what, what you see or what um, is, is continuously mentioned affects the people. So it, it triggers in, in the people because, uh, humanly speaking, um, we learn things because of what we are either experiencing exposed or what to. we are exposed to, as you've rightly said. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is that when there is more material, say, on gayism and le lesbianism, people tend to experiment. And, and like I said, um, and spirit. You know, so uh, on the soulish realm, then you talk about the emotions, your intellect, and your will. Now, in the spiritual realm, it's where basically what you perceive and, and, and the spiritual influence to your person. You see, so what you see is really spirit. You know, so it has an impact in your life. And so people begin to experiment from um, a very tender age. So, uh, for instance, we would go to, and, and you'd find, uh, preponderance of young people, ladies, I mean girls and, and boys, you know, who for help, uh, lesbianism and all that. And you find, and you ask yourself, where did you start? And they say, well, I saw this um, television program or I was on the internet secretly and I saw this thing and I thought, let me experiment mm -hmm. or let me just engage. And somehow they end up getting hooked into it. And then ultimately it becomes almost a lifestyle issue. But it started somewhere. They were either exposed to it by somebody talking to them about it, or they were sexually abused. And, and so ultimately, uh, eventually, it begins to rub in. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's, it's a major challenge in our times. OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Muticia, uh, Emmanuel in South Sea, who's been uh, suffering with you know, uh, addiction to master for many, how does one begin the process of uh, recovery from addiction especially, mm -hmm. given that I believe with addiction it almost demands more every single time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the first, uh, uh, to start treatment, we start by acknowledging, and that the fact that he has a problem, then he needs to make the next effort and seek treatment uh, from a therapist, and at that point is when now, depending on the severity and any other associated problems or emotional issues, that's when now they'll come up with a treatment plan. And most of the time, the person needs to be for intensive, long hours and many days of therapy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that process, do you approach someone? Is there a way you can actually stop uh, the addiction on your own? You see, like with addictions, when we are starting the treatment, we usually ask the person, have you tried to stop on your own? Mm -hmm. And if this person has tried to stop on their own and they didn't succeed, mm -hmm. then it means they cannot keep doing it on their own. Mm -hmm. They need somebody else to help. Mm -hmm. So it, the initial process is for somebody to realize this is wrong. They know that they can get addicted and they're already doing it, then they need to realize eventually this will lead to an addiction. So let me stop before I reach addiction. But when you find a case where somebody has tried to stop on their own and they're not able to succeed, then it means they need external help. Mm -hmm. They need somebody else to help them do okay. it. Yes. All right. Uh, Musa, thank you for calling. Musa, to your question or comment? Musa? Musa Ali in Nairobi, are you there? Yes. Yes, do you have a question or comment? Okay, there seems to be a problem with that line. Musa, are you still there? Okay, I think we'll uh, proceed. And uh, remember, you can uh, give us a call if you've got a question. With me in the studio is uh, uh, Pastor Othniel Mobili and Dr. Catherine, uh, uh, Pastor uh, Othniel Mobili, who's a City Revival Temple Senior Pastor, and Dr. Catherine Muticia, who's a psychiatrist. And we're talking about uh, overcoming sexual addiction. Pastor, um, just like um, Catherine has said, you, so we, we need a support system. And I'll come back to you after we've taken a call from Mina. Hello, Maina. Thank you for calling to your question. So now, uh, that, um, some of us are uh, into a 
distinction when, when somebody doesn't really have uh, a sexual partner. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if that person is there, you, you have no, no, that, no, you don't have that interest. I mean, like, you don't have to masturbate. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, if you are alone, lonely, you just feel like, wow, you get the image of this person and do something. So what can you do about it? Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Pastor, maybe I'll even uh, start off with you with that one. Uh, we, we, this, this is not uh, an <laughs> issue. Yes. Okay. I think we have uh, addiction. If you are near him, who I may to remove to Kapsa Amanilo Pungufu. Eburu, dear Sari Lako Tafadali. Sasa Nauliza. Addiction. Mm -hmm. Why not you come condom billy? Even the Mengia Kapsa Amani Upungufu. Mm hmm. Sasa Nilipuana Upungufu are sexual. Mm hmm. Sasa Nilipuana Taku Lisa. Mm hmm. Your addiction Amani Nini, Metafayaji, who are Nakula Katamoja for a week. Mm hmm. And I joined the Kona Pipi and our daughter. Okay. Sasa Nikona Upusumbufu Saidi. Okay. Samani nilikuwa nikitembea hata mara kumi. Okay. Lakini e, sasa imepungua. Okay. Imepungua uh, mara moja kwa wiki. Okay, sawa. Asante. Thank you very much. Pastor, let's start with the uh, initial question of uh, the gentleman who called and he was asking um, when you're in a, in a, this is not just for people who are single mm -hmm. or without a partner. Yeah. This is a married man who also is going through um, masturbation. Uh, how does one deal with that given that you have a partner? Really, the partner mm -hmm. should take care of the sexual urge or need. Yeah. Um, the, the, the challenge with an addiction is that really you to satisfy it. Uh, because um, number one, by virtue of now the way the body functions, mm -hmm. you crave and demand for more. It becomes more unnatural. Mm -hmm. you know, so uh, uh, at, at the end of the day, um, a normal, natural human being, so to speak, mm -hmm. may not be able to actually meet the demands that have actually been placed upon by an individual because of now the, 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 the addiction and, mm -hmm. and all that. And so um, someone has to actually find a way of getting support to get out of this. And, and, and my take normally is to tell people, um, much as there's a stigma attached to it, the realization that number one, it's a common issue. You know, in fact, there's a scripture that says, no temptation has come upon not uncommon to men, you know. To understand that it's actually quite rampant. So many people actually suffering secretly and silently. Then you're able to come out so you can seek help and, and actually be assisted. Um, I know prayer helps because I've seen people delivered through prayer, uh, but you also need support systems in place where you actually have accountability groups, people you can actually be able to work with. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes uh, deliverance comes slowly, as it were, uh, as, as you're able to relate, change your lifestyle, uh, change what you do in the secret places and, and, and all that. That becomes very, very important. Uh, but then again, you don't have to give up. You know, because you may fail sometimes. You, 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 you may tell yourself, this is the last time I'm going to do this. Then tomorrow you fall into the same thing. Right. You know, uh, I normally, again, administer scripture and say, All right, times he gets, gets up, up eight times, so to speak. Okay. You know? Dr. Tari, uh, this is not, uh, when, especially when it comes to masturbation, if you have a partner, then it's really no longer about sex. Because you do have somebody who you can, you know, uh, have your sexual needs met. How does one now overcome that given that you are actually in a relationship you, you, you have a partnership mm -hmm. i would say in a marriage setup probably this could be something which started before the marriage and uh, they find that they have not dealt with it mm -hmm. or it could be probably it starts in either through curiosity mm -hmm. or the fact that they are not getting sexual satisfaction in the marriage and mm -hmm. they look for other ways to deal with this tension. Mm -hmm. So uh, it could be probably it wasn't taken care of before the marriage or it has started in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Because again, we can't rightfully, it wouldn't be right if we said that uh, it's true that all couples are satisfying each other. And that's why the caller, the last caller, brought out the issue of uh, hyposexuality, where either you're satisfied or you're not satisfying your spouse, it happens in marriage. So again, it could be this person was not getting satisfied. Instead of seeking help for the treatment to be 
for both of them, mm -hmm. they decided to look for other uh, alternatives. Right. And they ended up getting addicted. Mm -hmm. And we also need to tell our viewers that uh, uh, initially it will not be, it starts as a curiosity experimental until it begins ad becomes addiction. And addiction is where you, like you've lost control. Mm -hmm. And it controls your life and it affects your social life, it affects your occupational life. Mm -hmm. That's now when we call it we say it's an addiction. an addiction and we encourage those people who are starting to realize this is dangerous and i would rather stop before i reach addiction okay and maybe uh, who mentions that uh, to um, you know be sexually active maybe like 10 times a week uh, to once and maybe just to add it may not be an addiction yes. but also in regards to what may cause that because it may be concerned genuinely mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Has reduced. yes, it would be good for that particular caller to get evaluated because there could be medical causes like diabetes or like some medication they are on. So it would be good for them to first of all be assessed by a doctor to make sure they don't have any other problem. Mm -hmm. If not, then uh, the psychological aspects also can be dealt with mm -hmm. because it could be they have no medical issue, general medical issues, but they have psychological issues which need to be addressed and they will need to be treated together with the spouse. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And then of course the issue of his age because mm -hmm. you see you're not a teenager forever right you know, so your sexual drive when you're younger is much higher mm -hmm. you know, if the guy is maybe 50 60 naturally you can't be performing at the same level at which you are performing when, when you're you young. younger so again those are factors that definitely he needs to take cognizance of. okay yeah all right uh, dr Ari, one of the things you mentioned and it is true is the access to uh, pornographic material uh, because of you know the day and age we live in and this g given that this may start at a very young age teenage what would you advise to parents be uh, to keep an eye on their children and how would you identify if your child is beginning to get addicted to some of these things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we are constantly telling parents to talk the talk before the children start the walk because you find that when you wait until it's too late because we are seeing uh, children getting exposed to these things at very early age, even right. before puberty, mm -hmm. even ages of eight years, seven years, we are seeing them getting exposed to that. So you need to start as early as possible so that by the time your child is getting, ex uh, probably their peers uh, introduce it to them or they see it, they land on their phone, then they know this is wrong because if I start this, it could lead to addiction, which will become a more serious problem. Parents to have those the parents to have such discussions early early on before they even reach teenage, so that by the time they reach there, they know if I engage in this behavior, these are the consequences. These are the consequences. Mm -hmm. Pastor, your your closing comments on how to overcome. Yeah, um, in a sense, like uh, I mentioned earlier, um, there is there is help for for us from God, um, as we are able and identify that actually it's, it's, it's an issue that anyone can get trapped in mm -hmm. and, 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 and in an addiction uh, situation. And so then um, my advice uh, to the viewers and especially those who are actually addicted is to begin to seek help early, you know, um, get people who they trust, relationships that they can eat with. Uh, if already it's a problem that they're dealing with in their marriage, they need to sit uh, with their spouse and actually develop a system, uh, a support system, by which they can actually be able to help one another to actually overcome. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes couples have actually gotten themselves into uh, problems where they've actually uh, encouraged it by watching pornographic movies together and all that. So it only accentuates the problem. So you actually need ways of support and decelerate in terms of um, not engaging in what is going to hook you up, mm -hmm. in what's going to become destructive to your marriage and to your life and to your work and to your all right, final thoughts, Dr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would uh, want to tell the viewers that uh, uh, when it comes to uh, sexual addictions or masturbation or, or pornography, the best way to deal with it is to prevent. Because treatment is a lot of intense treatment and with uh, a lot of uh, relapses and uh, failures. So the best thing is to realize if you're already starting it, re stop it before you reach addiction because you don't uh, engage in the behavior the first day and you get addicted. So if you're already starting it, stop. For those who are addicted, 
still there's treatment, but they need to be patient and they need to start the treatment. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. That's uh, uh, Pastor Othniel Mobili, City Revival Temple Senior Pastor, and Dr. Catherine Muticia, Psychiatrist. That's where we wind it up. And uh, yes, prevention is better than cure.